many and maybe even most boxing fans are very quick to shout robbery when a fight doesn't go the way they wanted it to go on the scorecards. And there are many boxing fans who are crying robbery every other weekend. But if you have been a subscriber of mine for any length of time, then you will know that out of the thousands of videos I've made on this channel and my old channel, there hasn't been many in which I've stated that a fight was an out-and-out -out robbery. There hasn't been many. Off the top of my head, I would say Chisora Hellenius was an out-and-out -out robbery. I would say Pacquiao Bradley won was an out and out robbery and obviously there have been others but again given the fact that I've made thousands of videos about thousands of different fights I haven't made many relative to the overall number of videos I've done in which I've claimed a fight was a robbery because I usually like to play devil's advocate and try and see things from the other perspective and entertain the other side of the argument because a lot of fights have got low volume rounds you take the Ward Kovalev first fight a lot of rounds where there wasn't much to split them in terms of punches thrown and landed so when people were crying robbery I just didn't buy it same thing with Canelo against Golovkin, people screaming robbery. There wasn't that much in it in terms of clean punches landed all the way through the fight. So although I can understand people who fought Golovkin won, and I could understand people who fought Kovalev beat Ward in the first fight, they weren't such clear victories that you would call it a robbery when the other guy gets the decision, or in the case of Canelo against Golovkin 1, it's a draw. When people are aggrieved by how wide scorecards are, I can understand that. So, you know, some of Canelo's fights, which have really been close fights, have ended up with Canelo being the winner by enormous margins on the scorecards. That I can understand people being upset by. But the actual result, you know, Canelo winning, you can't really complain about most of Canelo's fights if you're being objective. Some of his fights could have gone either way, sure. But Canelo winning by a round or two, it's alright. It's not that bad. That's not what I would call a robbery. What I call a robbery is a fight where one guy clearly wins. And there's really no dispute. There's really no other way to see it other than this one man won the fight because he threw and landed way more than his opponent. And Zach Parker versus Daryl Williams was one of those fights. Oh yes, it was. Now I've seen Daryl Williams fight many times. This was the first time I've seen Zach Parker fight though. The much taller man. For those of you who haven't seen Daryl Williams fight before, he is, the best way to describe him is a super middleweight Mike Tyson clone. He's clearly a massive fan of Mike Tyson, either him or his trainer, perhaps both. And he's patterned his style on Iron Mike. He doesn't have anywhere near that level of talent, explosiveness and athletic ability. But in terms of the technique, he has tried to learn the Mike Tyson custom auto style. And he's, I guess, relatively successful with it. This was his first professional loss. So he's doing all right with it. Uh, again, he's not the kind of puncher that Mike Tyson is. Not pound for pound as fast or as explosive or dynamic. But he was having good success with the head movement. Applying pressure to Zach Parker. And all due respect to Zach Parker... He clearly injured a hand or an arm fairly early on in the fight, and that made him a one-handed fighter for the majority of the 12 rounds. And he was 
very brave and showed a lot of toughness just to get through that fight. As a one-handed fighter when he had Darryl Williams all over him like white on rice. All over him like a cheap suit. He was beating that boy like a piñata. And Zach Parker managed to hang on, survive, you know, jab, move and stay in there. But as gallant as that effort was, there is absolutely no way that Zach Parker won this fight. No way. Daryl Williams clearly, clearly won the fight. And after the 12 rounds, when they announced the first scorecard, I knew that something was wrong. The first scorecard was 117-112. Now, if they had it 117-112 for Williams, I would have understood. But I just felt as though I could just feel in the air that this fight was going to be closer on the scorecards than it should have been. So when I heard one scorecard was that wide, and then they announced Parker's name, you knew something was seriously amiss. Then they had Williams 115-113, which is close as far as I'm concerned. I think Williams really was hard done by even by that scorecard. I think it was a bit wider than that in all reality. And the final scorecard only had it to Parker by one point. So very strange scorecards, particularly the 117, 112. And Darrell Williams has got to be absolutely devastated by the fact that he was robbed. That's what happened here. He was robbed. It was daylight robbery. There is no way that Zach Parker won this fight. No way. Darrell Williams clearly won it. And again, sorry to labor the point about robberies, but for example, O'Hara Davis felt very aggrieved and upset about the fact that he lost the Jack Catchell fight. And that, I guess, is a good example of a fight where I can't argue with the result. I know O'Hara has been saying it's a robbery. In my opinion, it definitely wasn't a robbery. It was a fight which was close and it could have gone either way. If O'Hara had won it by a point or two, I wouldn't have complained. If Catrell had won it by a point or two, I wouldn't have complained. It's only the margin by which Catrell won the fight on the judges' scorecards that I had an issue with. The fact that they gave it to him by enormous margins. That was ridiculous. Or at least one of the judges anyway had it by an enormous margin. That's totally ridiculous. It was a close nip and tuck fight. (laughs) You know, Um, that wasn't a robbery because... There was very few punches separating them every round, you know? Whereas Darrell Williams, as I say, he was all over. Zach Parker, like white on rice. <laughs> I mean, he was hitting him with all kinds of shots. Darrell Williams' work was a little scrappy at times, don't get it twisted. But as scrappy as it was, he was still outworking his man. And it's not like Zach Parker's work was much cleaner most of the time. You know, he was just trying to survive most of the rounds and get through. In the very late rounds, he did enjoy an Indian summer in the fight, uh, a late resurgence. But for me, that was far too little, far too late. And yeah, he clearly clearly lost as far as I'm concerned. And Daryl Williams, if he's out there making videos saying that he got robbed, then I'm going to have to go put a thumbs up on that video because he did get robbed. Yeah. I don't co-sign O'Hara saying he got robbed because he didn't. But Darrell Williams, he definitely got robbed. Yeah. 100%. Anyway, let me know what you guys felt about this fight in the comment section below. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each 
podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.